Hello everyone, this is John Pauli from the University of Gothenburg in Gothenburg, Sweden. Welcome to this podcast on the dermoscopic features of porokeratosis. As you know, porokeratoses are benign lesions of unknown etiology manifesting with aberrant keratinization. There are many clinical variances seen here. Some variants are acquired and some are inherited. In this podcast, we will mainly show cases of the two most common types, porokeratosis of mibelli and disseminated superficial actinic porokeratosis. Nevertheless, the dermoscopic features are very similar in all the different clinical subtypes. So the subtype will actually be more influenced by clinical factors such as the number of lesions, their distribution, the patient's age, and so forth, rather than the dermoscopic features. Porokeratosis of mibelli are single or a few erythematous scaly patches that are more frequently seen in men. They're usually 1 to 2 centimeters in diameter, but can have a variable size from a few millimeters to several centimeters in diameter. The scales are usually more prominent at the periphery, forming a keratotic rim. The central area is usually slightly atrophic, but can sometimes be scaly or hyperpigmented. The keratin rim at the periphery is due to abnormal keratinization, which can be seen in the bottom right-hand corner. Histopathologically, you can see the typical perikeratotic column, which is known as the coronoid lamella. This coronoid lamella can usually be seen clinically as a scaly ring, as you can see in the image to the left. The keratin rim is also seen in dermoscopy, and this corresponds to the coronoid lamella. In the central dermoscopic image, the keratin rim is pointed out by the white arrows. In the upper right-hand corner, the keratin rim has been magnified and can be seen between the white lines. In disseminated superficial actinic porokeratosis, or DSAP, patients develop multiple porokeratoses, usually on their lower arms and or legs, with a symmetric distribution. It is considered an inherited autosomal dominant keratinization disorder, primarily affecting fair-skinned patients. It is more common in women and usually debuts after 35 to 40 years of age. DSAP may be exacerbated by UV exposure or phototherapy and can also be seen in immunosuppressed individuals. In this case, we can see the typical keratin rims in the dermoscopic image to the right. We can also see scales in the central atrophic areas, small areas of hyperpigmentation, and diffusely distributed dotted vessels. The most common features of porokeratosis, regardless of the subtype, are listed here. Without a doubt, the keratin rim is the most common finding in dermoscopy. Although it can be found in almost all cases, sometimes only partial rims are visible. Along the keratin rim, we can sometimes find small areas of gray-brown pigmentation or gray-brown dots. In other cases, erosions or blood spots are present along the keratin rim. In the central area, vessels can be present. These can be dotted or glomerular, linear, irregular, or branched, or even polymorphous. Discrete peripheral vascularization outside the keratin rim can also be visualized sometimes. The central area can also feature scales, diffuse areas of light brown hyperpigmentation, and even shiny white structures including lines, rosettes, or blotches and strands. So let's see some cases. Let's start by looking at dermoscopic features related to the keratin rim. Here's a typical case of poor keratosis in which dermoscopy reveals the full keratin rim highlighted in between the black arrows. In some cases, the keratin rim can display areas with gray-brown pigmentation or gray-brown dots. In this case, the whole keratin rim is heavily pigmented. This is also a nice case to demonstrate the atrophy of the central area in the lesion. The atrophy makes the linear, regular, or branched vessels more visible, as well as the follicular openings, which are seen here as white dots or small white circles. Another dermoscopic feature that can be observed sometimes along the keratin rim are small erosions with or without blood spots, as highlighted by the white circles here. Since the keratin rim is so important for the dermoscopic diagnosis of porokeratosis, it's important to be aware of the fact that it's sometimes only partially visible. In very rare cases, we can't find a keratin rim at all. Okay, so now let's let's take a look at the vascular structures we can expect to find in porokeratosis. In erythematous lesions such as this one, it's not unusual to find dotted or glomerular vessels, which are commonly regularly distributed as seen here. Here's another case with dotted or glomerular vessels in the central area. Also highlighted within the circles are some erosions and blood spots along the keratin rim as seen previously. Here's one more example in which the vessels can be more easily identified as glomerular. This patient with DSAP had multiple lesions in which the vessels were linear and branched. In this solitary perikeratosis, we see very prominent vasculature with linear branched vessels again. As you can also see, most of the keratin rim is pigmented in this case. 
Another vascular finding that can be found from time to time in poor keratosis is peripheral vascularization just outside the keratin rim. Demarcated by the white line, we see lots of dotted vessels around the keratin rim. We also see some dotted vessels within the keratin rim, but not as many in the central part of the lesion. In this case, we see abundant, evenly distributed dotted vessels within the central atrophic area of the pora keratosis, but we also see them surrounding the keratin rim within the white demarcation. Finally, let's talk a little bit about other dermoscopic features that can be found in the central area apart from vessels. These will be scales, hyperpigmentation, and shiny white structures. It's not infrequent to find white scales within the central area. In this case, we can appreciate the hyperkeratosis surrounding the follicular openings. Here's another case with scales within the central area. As you can see, there are also some peripheral areas of light brown hyperpigmentation. As mentioned, hyperpigmented areas can be seen in some pore keratoses, such as in this case of DSAP. Here's one more case of hyperpigmentation in another case of DSAP. This is a beautiful solitary pore keratosis lesion with several interesting features. We see a pigmented keratin rim, widespread dotted vessels, but as you can also appreciate, there are abundant shiny white lines intermixed with the dotted vessels. In this pigmented pore keratosis, we can find a few rosettes of varying size within the central area. These are highlighted with white circles. In this rather large pore keratosis, we see lots of features including shiny white blotches and strands within the yellow demarcation. Now this is the last case I wanted to show you, which hopefully can serve as a summary since it features many of the dermoscopic features that have been discussed in this podcast. In this beautiful heart-shaped pore keratosis, we of course see the typical keratin rim. In the central area, we can see dotted vessels and shiny white lines that are evenly distributed within the central area. When we look even closer, we can also find a few erosions and blood spots along the keratin rim, as well as peripheral dotted vessels outside the keratin rim in some areas. I'd like to finish by thanking the IDS for their support in making this podcast possible. I'd also like to thank my co-workers, Oscar Zar and Sam Polesi, who are helping put together our data in this IDS porokeratosis study, which we hope to publish soon. And last but not least, a huge, huge thank you to all the fantastic IDS members mentioned here who have submitted cases for the study and which have been presented in this podcast. Thank you very much for your attention and take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.